Hi. Hey, everybody. I know that um, we get just some of you that are able to catch us live when we're actually really live. And most of you are going to watch this back later. And you know what I think? It's all good whenever you can watch. So it's so good to have you here. We are going to be talking about something that um, is really a significant part of scrapbooking and it isn't talked about a whole lot. And I don't actually feel like this is going to be drawn on very long. I actually think that we can kind of get through some good helpful tips in a pretty efficient amount of time. So if you're here, please um, feel free to chime in and let me know what questions you have or thoughts or ideas, anything related to what we're talking about. So here's the topic, journaling. Journaling in your scrapbooks specifically. So if you're watching, I'm assuming that you are either a scrapbooker or you are a wannabe scrapbooker or a used to be scrapbooker. And when it comes to the journaling, the storytelling part that goes in combination with the photographs that makes the scrapbooks, um, we've all learned that the struggle is real, right? With journaling, it's so real and it's frustrating. And I'm wondering if you want to comment or um, chime in with any thoughts that you have. When I say the struggle is real, do you feel that? And if you have a specific place that you feel hung up with all things journaling when it comes to scrapbooking specifically, I want you to go ahead right now and think, what is that problem that I have? What is the struggle that I have? And I'm not going to be able to address every single comment, but Molly's watching for comments and she'll jot notes down on a few things that we catch because I want to address some of what you guys are sharing and I want you to help each other out too. So I'm the only one, um, in front of the camera this way, but you're all part of this conversation. So please feel free to add um, any of that. So yes, the struggle is real. And so here's my question for you. I want you to tell me what your hang up is. Um, is it that you just don't know what to write? Is it that you don't like your handwriting? I mean, just whatever your hang up is, it would be really interesting. My goal is that by the end of this broadcast, you are going to feel more confident about adding journaling to your scrapbooks. And this doesn't mean that you need to write gobs of stories or become a prolific writer overnight or anything like that. It just means that whatever you're doing now that maybe isn't working as well in terms of the journaling, that you improve upon that and you feel a little bit more motivated to do more or to do better with the writing part. So that is kind of my overriding philosophy. When you think about the struggle is real with journaling, we all know that. When you think about what scrapbooking is, it's, it's what? It's pictures and it's stories. And those things, when they come together, are what make a scrapbook. And so as I was mentioning on social media, um, I think it was yesterday, I was saying that years ago when I was looking at my friend's scrapbook, she had put together all these beautiful pages and it was a lovely looking scrapbook, but there was literally no journaling. And then when she did add just something, it was like Chicago. Like that's it, like just the name of a place or something. So as a viewer or as a, you know, an audience to the scrapbook, or a scrapbook, I was looking at that thinking, I don't know anything about what any of this is. And so that's what made me think, huh, journaling does matter. And I had already been journaling in my scrapbooks, but it made me more intentional about the journaling. So just by chance, Molly, do we have some comments coming in? Oh yeah, about, a lot of comments. Good, okay. I mean, not good that it's a struggle but good that we're gonna address a lot of this. All right, what do we have so far? Someone asked, what is the best way to go back? She has a lot of scrapbooks with no journaling in them at all and isn't sure where to start. Okay, all right, and I'm not gonna address it yet. I wanna hear just kind of rattle off several of them okay. and we're gonna circle back to the questions. Do you write in third person or first person? Okay. That's always a question. Um, she feels like she always misses something and has a hard time keeping her thoughts organized. Mm -hmm. um, someone else said, um, that you know. she struggles finding her own voice. She wants to tell the stories, but don't have, doesn't have kids, so she's not sure what how oh, she's writing good. to. Oh, good, such a good question. Okay, so let's stop there. So these are all really, really, really good questions. This is what I think I would like to do, just from an organizational standpoint. Let me go ahead and share with you what four main tips come to my mind when I think of just generically speaking, generally speaking, four tips for journaling in your scrapbooks that I can share with you. 
Some of what we has already been brought up will probably be covered in that. But then as soon as I get through these, let's go ahead and answer some of those more specific questions because you guys have really great commentary um, already and I appreciate that so much. If you feel, by the way, that some of what we're sharing does resonate with you and you think it will resonate with others, please do me a favor and click on share and just share this broadcast so that your friends can also benefit from feeling inspired and excited about adding journaling to their scrap books. All right, so tip number one, um, write what comes to mind. Now, I know that seems kind of like, what does that even mean? A little bit um, vague, but this is what I mean. I want you to imagine if, let's say you've created a scrapbook and let's say you have left the room and a friend comes over and she sees your scrapbook and she sits down to look at your scrapbook and she's flipping through the pages and, and imagine if you were sitting there, but you're not, you're not there. If you were sitting there, what would you tell her? You would be looking over her shoulder and you'd be seeing those pictures and there, she would be going, oh, what is that? What's this? Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Tell me about it. And whatever comes to mind is what you'd be telling her, right? And that is, that's such a simple, simple way to approach it. And a lot of people do overthink what they're supposed to write um, and what they feel is expected of them. And I don't know what that is. I don't know what people feel like is expected of them because I don't have an expectation of you as a scrapbooker. I just want you to write something down. So if you and I were sitting together and we're looking at your scrapbook, I just want you to tell me whatever comes to mind. And it really can be that simple. So um, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. This is one of the pages from my own personal scrapbook. Molly, is that kind of like in the frame a little I, bit? I'm a little bit behind. So. Oh, okay. Oh, but yeah, you're good, you're good. Okay. So I, you obviously can't see any, any of this close up, but I'm just giving you an example. This is a Project Life page that all of the photos and cards slipped into pockets. And I'm gonna to read to you the journaling. There's nothing profound about what I'm gonna share with you, but I'm gonna share exactly what I wrote is exactly what just came to my mind and I didn't overthink anything. Um, and this is, by the way, this is part of, um, it says the title's January 8th through 14, because this is uh, the way that I like to um, document our family stories. It's kind of on a week by week basis and just kind of what's going on in that week. So this is everyday stuff. This is not a big occasion. This is nothing, you know, particularly special. It's just stuff. So first of all, this picture right here is a picture that I took that I felt was important for our story because it's the way that I used to during this particular year, keep lists. And I'm still a list maker and list making is so a part of who I am and what I do. Um, as a, as a human being, a human being, not just as a, you know, a business owner. So this is what I said for the journaling. I'm a list maker. And lately this is a notebook where I have been keeping my random notes and to do's. It may be a mess to someone else, but it is my mess. Anything profound about that? No. Do you think I stewed over like the wording and exactly how that's going to come out? No. Is it impressive to anyone? No, that's not the point. The point is, is that it is something that comes to mind about a memory or a, a, an anecdote in my life, okay? Another example, I've got this picture right here that shows um, my child's artwork that I just kind of laid out and took a picture of because I didn't feel like I needed to save every little picture. So I wrote, I am such a sucker for the kids' art. It seriously makes me so happy. I love how their personality shows through and everything they draw or color or create. These are some of Porter's latest. Okay, so again, it's not particularly profound, but it's what comes to mind. The reason why I took that picture is because I love my children's artwork, I, as most of you do. It's something that I just, I fall for it so easily. So instead of just thinking that, but not writing it down, I'm just literally writing what I'm thinking. Um, okay, one more example, and then we'll move on. This picture is right here. And this literally just shows a snapshot of, <clears throat> of what's in my car at the time. And I wrote, this is a very typical scene in my mom van. My everyday purse, some, some coupons, phone, water bottle, grocery bags on the floor. I really love the taxi driver role in my life. It's a great time to really catch up with the kids too. That's it. Like that, that's just what comes to mind. When I look at that stuff beside me in the van, that is what came to mind. And so that's what I wrote down. Okay, so that's tip number one. Just write what comes to mind. All right, tip number two. Short and sweet for the win. Short and sweet, guys. 
short and sweet. So when we developed Project Life, when I kind of conceptualized this whole system and how it would work, I realized that pictures and stories needed to come together. And so pictures are sliding in pockets, cards are sliding in pockets. Well, the cards are only um, three by four or four by six. That's what you're seeing right here, right? They're little. So the thing is, is that I recognize that that's not a lot of space. And so for some people who want to write and write and write and write, there's workarounds for that. And you can certainly add a lot of journaling in different ways. But this little card right here is so small. It's so not intimidating. It actually makes me feel like, you know what? I can write something because it's not that much and it's doable. And so that's the one thing I want you to think is that when it comes to journaling, it doesn't have to be long, long stories. It can totally just be on a little card. And that's the whole premise of Project Life. Bring your stories and photos together, but the stories don't have to be super long. Um, okay, and then, yeah, there's nothing else to say on that. I just, short and sweet for the win because it is better than nothing. And I think that some of you might feel intimidated about journaling because you really picture journaling as this really time-consuming, involved thing, and it doesn't have to be that way, okay? All right, tip number three, choose a voice and stick with it. All right, so somebody was asking earlier about first person, third person, what's my voice? So on that, it's a personal decision, first of all. There's no rules to this. But when I say choose a voice and stick to it, my place from where I'm coming from with that isn't about rules per se, it's about, it's more about, um, simplifying your process. So for example, let's say you are creating a scrapbook. That whole scrapbook is for someone, for something, for whatever, okay? So as I always like to talk about with scrapbooking, if you begin with the end in mind and you think, what's the end result? Where is this scrapbook going? Who is it for? Then that actually helps you to decide, well, then what voice am I using? And once you've made that decision, and you just make that a consistent thing, then what's so cool is that page by page by page by page, you're not wondering and starting fresh over and over and over, like, what, okay, how should I word it here and how should I word it there? Just stick with the one voice and carry it through. So let me give you an example. Let's say you have a, an ongoing family yearbook or a scrapbook, okay? That's what I do personally. And so in my family yearbook, I know as an end result that these yearbooks, these scrapbooks are for us, like my husband, me and the five or the three, I don't have five kids, the five of us, the three kids that we have, it's for our immediate family. First and foremost, it's for us. We're reflecting on our memories. We like to look back at these books. It's all great. But because I began with the end in mind with all of this, and I do hope that these books get passed down through the generations then I want that voice for this particular project to actually be a little bit more universal, a little bit more to whoever sees these down the road and 150 years from now, I want them to know that I am speaking to them as well. Now, don't think that I'm overthinking this. It's actually the opposite. It's because I gained clarity and my goal for the family yearbooks that it's actually simplified all of my journaling. So the reason I say this is that in the family yearbooks, my journaling is, is like what I just shared. It's very generic. So I'm not speaking to my children. I'm not saying, Porter, you were awesome today. I'm saying, Porter was awesome today. Porter did this, Porter did that, okay? And so that way, it's not to a specific person, it's more generic. And that for me is the way I've chosen to write. Now, on the flip side, as another example, and we'll move on, is let's say you're making a baby book and you really want this baby book to be like an like a love letter to your child. You want it to be um, for that specific child to that specific child. And that voice is really you as the parent and the documenter and this gift that you're putting together for them. You want that direct relationship to be felt. You want those words to pierce them individually when they see this years and years from now, right? So in that case, if I were to put together a, scrap, a baby scrapbook like that, specific for Claire, that's all about just to her, then the voice I'm using is to her, and I'm keeping it consistent. So instead of saying, um, Claire was awesome today, it's Claire, you were awesome today. I love you because you mean this to me. Um, we did this together, 
And it's that kind of a voice. I hope I'm making sense. You guys catch on to what I'm saying here? All right, so choosing a voice and sticking with it. And then tip number four is, um, this is my last tip and then we'll take some questions. So be sure you're thinking about your questions. Um, oh, it's like my favorite thing to talk about with scrapbooking. You ready for this? Don't overthink it. Don't overthink the journaling. Now I'm not gonna elaborate on that because I have a um, one of my, somebody in our community on Instagram actually shared something with me that I'm gonna just read because she just summed it up. You ready for this? Um, I don't think she can watch live. I think she said, I can't watch live, but I have this to say, okay? And it's at Christy Lou. She says, great topic. I won't be able to watch live, but I wanted to share my experience with this. I really struggled with journaling until I got over what I call pressure to be profound. I don't know why, but we put so much pressure on ourselves to have a perfect and profound thought for every photo or page of our scrapbooks. That mindset took the fun out of documenting for me. That's when it clicked for me and I knew I needed to reframe how I thought about and approached journaling. So I got over it. Oh, I love that she said that. Just get over it, right? Don't overthink it. So I got over it and it was completely freeing. Now I just write what feels good. If I don't fill a whole card, who cares? If I need to have one page with just one photo and the rest of the pockets tell the story, that's cool too. And what she's talking about like with, with uh, uh, Project Life, with pocket scrapbooking, you literally could have just one photo in one of the pockets and the rest of the cards or the rest of the pockets can be filled with cards. Sometimes, she says, sometimes I will quickly journal the date and the title of an event. Other times I will document a quote that made me crack up laughing or a story of something I experienced. Once I literally got real with my journaling, literally got real. She just said what she thought. It's just whatever kind of came out and got over the pressure to be profound. I found my groove and I love it. Isn't that awesome? So thank you, Christy, for sharing that because you are exactly what I'm hoping other people will feel too, which is don't overthink it. Just let these words come out of your mouth and onto paper. Don't feel like you have to write so many paragraphs for everything. Um, now, before we take questions, let me just show you a couple more examples of how simple, simple, simple um, journaling can be in your scrapbooks, okay? So here's an example. I think Christina Prophet made this page. She sometimes is able to join our broadcast. So, hi, Christina. I think that's your kiss. Yeah. Okay, so here's some examples of journaling that she put on here. First of all, over here, there's a little caption that says, Kaylin's first pair of flip-flops, and then she did the date stamp. Um, we have one of those, May 12th, 2013. Great, simple, right? But if I don't know that those are Kaylin's first pair of flip-flops or the date, this picture is completely meaningless to me. If I'm, if I am a, say, a great-granddaughter coming across this scrapbook. But when I see that there's actually an attachment of a memory to that, it's like, that's kind of fun. Like, she's a little girl growing up, this is her pair, first pair of flip-flops, like, that's just a fun detail, right? Okay, and then another journaling card says, Jack is such a big boy now. He finally has his cool big boy bed all set up in his room. He's super excited to sleep in it tonight. Okay, now why is this important? Okay, let me just show you something. That journaling card is right next to this picture. If I saw this picture with no journaling, you know what it looks like? A cute boy, period. Just a cute boy. I don't know anything about it. Don't know where he was. Don't know why this matters. But knowing that this is his first big boy bed, I feel a connection with Jack. I feel like I could feel what his excitement probably was because this is a big milestone in his life. So do you see how even just a teeny bit of journaling, it doesn't have to be profound, but it can just, it identifies what's going on and it helps people to connect with the memories. And what I, I want to say one more thing on that too. A lot of people have this um, misconception that scrapbooking is just for posterity. There's so many of you watching who don't have posterity. You're not planning to have kids or you're not able to, and you're not planning on this being passed down through generations. Journaling is connecting stories together, but not just for other viewers. It's also for you. It's for, it's for you to connect the stories and pictures together as well. I have found that when I document life through taking pictures and also combining those pictures with the stories, 
that I am more connected to what is good in my life. I'm more connected to my blessings. And so for that reason alone, even if no one ever saw my scrapbooks, I am emotionally benefiting from documenting and adding that journaling to my scrapbook pages. All right, last thing I'm gonna show you and then we'll take questions. Um, these are some wedding pages. So I talk about the everyday a lot. I think it's really important to document the everyday memories. Well, when it comes to big moments, a lot of people really like put that off because they feel so intimidated about how profound it really should be and how amazing the stories need to be this romantic recollection of every detail. No, actually it doesn't have to be that way. So I think this is Lori Mae Barba that did this wedding page. So she literally included in here facts. Maid of honor was Angelica. Best man was Jose. Flower girl was Kilani. Kilani. Sorry, I'm saying that wrong. Um, ring bearer was Marky. Um, and then it was at the St. Polycarp Catholic Church. So that's your who, what, when, where, you know, like that's the basic information. And then what's so sweet is instead of overthinking like this profound, long, long story, on one journaling card right here, so short and sweet and simple, she said whatever came to her mind or into her heart. Short and sweet, this is what she says. And it's more of a prayer. Thank you, Lord, for blessing this union. Now our family is complete. Please guide us in being the best parents we can be and in being there for one another unconditionally. So short, so sweet. And it allows me, somebody who's looking at this page, to connect with why these pictures are so significant. And do you need to have journaling on every page? Of course not. Should you include it once in a while at least? Yeah, absolutely. This card says, our reception was at the Holiday Inn. It was such a wonderful evening. My mom's toast was so very touching and we danced the night away with friends and family. Again, doesn't have to be super profound. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. I can show you lots of examples, lots of pages that, um, that illustrate how simple journaling can be. But I'm gonna turn the time over to you guys and Molly's gonna share with me comments or questions that have come up and then we'll do that for a few minutes before I let you go on with your day. What is your advice on keeping it simple but not boring? Someone said they always start with the same thing. I love it when, I loved it when. Okay, that's a really good point. That's actually a really good point. So you're starting the journaling with I love it when, I love it when, um, and you're kind of finishing it. So you feel like maybe that's too repetitive or too, um, too boring. Well, let's go back to that one tip that I was sharing. If I was sitting next to you and there was no journaling on the pages, just talk to me. Would you start every sentence with, I love it when, or would you be like, oh my goodness, I forgot about that shirt that my son is wearing. That shirt, we actually got it on the clearance rack for $2 and my son was never more excited in his life. Okay, so that has nothing to do with the memory, right? But it's a story, it's an anecdote, and it's not I love it when, it's just something that came to your mind when you look at the picture, what do you think of? It's not just about what's happening in the picture, it's also what other stories are behind the curtain, you know what I mean? And so I think that's one way that you can approach it. Okay, next question. Um, how do you suggest journaling in the past? Things that you don't quite remember as well that you've left, you've kind of put it off. That's a really great question as well. I'm actually gonna tie in what I just said to this question. So if you, let's say you have past scrapbooks that you are like, oh, I didn't add any journaling, I should add something. Or let's say you are just, you're scrapbooking the past, like you're actually doing it now. If you don't remember a lot, and hello, we're all in that boat. Like my memory is terrible from like my whole childhood. Like I have a terrible memory. I think it's part of why I scrapbook now so that I can be better about remembering and honoring these, you know, things that happen in my life. So. If you can't remember a whole lot, let's say you, you come across a picture, again, ties totally into what I was just talking about. Let's say you come across a picture, you have no idea where you were in that picture, what was going on, or who that person is that's standing next to it. But if it's a picture, for example, from your childhood, and you're like, I think that person was maybe from school, or I don't know, and I don't know where we were, why don't you instead of wrapping your head around the facts of the whatever's happening, why don't you just think about how do you feel? When you think about your childhood, looking at this picture reminds you of your childhood. You don't know what's going on in the picture, but you are thinking about and reflecting on your childhood. So with that in mind, what thoughts come to mind about your childhood in general? What thoughts come to mind when you think about where you grew up and who was in your family at that time? Who was in your home? 
What kind of hobbies did you have? You know, there's certain things that we don't have pictures of. And because we don't have pictures of all these details that would be interesting, let's take hobbies for example. Well, if there's no pictures of it, just take some generic picture that you don't know anything about, it's just you in your childhood, and use that opportunity to pair a story and a photo together. It's a picture of me in my childhood, it's pretty generic, but you know what? I'm gonna tell you what my favorite hobbies were. I remember when I was 11, 12 years old that I loved to play um, club with my friends. We would like start a club and there were like membership you know, fees to the club and you have to pay in friendship bracelets. And this is all not even made up. <laughs> I actually did love doing that as a child. But these, um, these childhood memories or these memories from the past can be random paired with a picture that you know nothing about. That's kind of the, that's kind of the point I'm trying to make. Do you worry about repeating yourself? Several people have said they feel like this, they say the same thing over and over and over. Um, so I don't know if you mean like the beginning of like, I love it when, like if you're starting about that, or if you're, if you're thinking about the way that you start your journaling, or if you feel like you say the same things over and over, like the content. So for example, one way that you guys might feel like you're repeating yourself is um, maybe you're writing to your children and you're talking to them and you're like, I love you so much. Um, you amaze me every day. I'm so thankful for you. Well, there's nothing wrong with being repetitive about how grateful you feel, first of all. But secondly, if you really do feel like you are literally on repeat, let's not repeat something just to repeat something. Don't repeat it or write something just to write something. If you, um, if you wanna take the approach of several of the tips that I've been sharing and kind of wrap it all into one pretty little package, the idea here is that if you are kind of like, what should I say about this? I don't know what to say then consider saying something random that comes to mind when you think about what you see in the picture. Not what was happening in the picture, but you know, what else comes to mind. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, one last question. How do you keep your journaling organized? Do you kind of pre-plan or do you just go with the flow? Oh, that's a good idea um, to talk about that. So everyone does have their own workflow and I will just share mine and I hope that you guys will chime in with your thoughts as well. So for me, when it comes to my family scrapbooking, which is my ongoing every Sunday, um, which I consider the end of the week because it goes through the weekend, every Sunday is kind of my day to make last week's two pages, two scrapbook pages or one layout in the family scrapbook. And so I don't do any journaling notes at all through the week because my memory is intact for at least a week. <laughs> I don't forget too much in a week. And so when I scrapbook on a Sunday night, I'm able to look at the pictures, choose the ones that I feel like really best represent our family story for that week. And then picture by picture, I do exactly what I'm encouraging you guys to do. I look at the picture, I just allow my, my mind and my heart to just go wherever it wants to go in that picture. So sometimes it's factual, sometimes it's like, this is where we went, this is who we were with, this is what we did, this is you know the experience. And then sometimes it's like, let's say it's a picture of my husband. It, it isn't about the event at all. It's just a plate, it's a, it's a nice picture of my husband. And then the journaling I might add is an expression of how grateful we are for all he does for our family because of this and this and this. And we noticed that this week he went the extra mile because blah, 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 blah. And so um, I forgot what the original question was now. Uh, oh, so organization. Mm -hmm. So let me say one more thing on that. And because that didn't really address, like it's so specific and everyone was gonna find their own groove. But one thing that I do do, and I know that people have different apps and different, you know, using different parts of their phone or whatever, but it's only like once probably every other week or so that I actually need to remember something verbatim because my child said something very specific though the way they worded it and I'm like oh my gosh that is so funny and that needs to be in their scrapbook or that is so profound what they said I need that in their scrapbook when I have that situation and if we're at home or if we whatever wherever we are I usually pull out my phone and I use Siri but you can type it as well and I text it to myself so I'll, I'll literally, like using Siri, I'll be like, Crew just said the funniest thing. Blah, 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 blah. Check the spelling, text it to myself. Not even check the spelling, but make sure the words are right in general. Text it myself so that when I am scrapbooking at the end of the week, I can just pull from that and I delete it and I'm good. So that's kind of a little workaround that I do. Um, and hopefully more of you are chiming in, but organization with journaling doesn't have to be overthought either. Right, and I, I do talk about this a lot with scrapbooking in general, and don't overthink it, don't overthink it, because I do think that we have trained ourselves 
as scrapbookers to overthink a lot of things and I don't think journaling should be one of those. And so um, in terms of tracking like your journaling notes, some people do keep a notebook and they, it's not that their memory is terrible, but they feel better about writing down um, specifics or certain details throughout the week or throughout the month or whatever, so that when they sit down to scrapbook, they literally just refer to that one notebook, which is awesome. I don't do that for myself, um, but I did at one point and it makes sense because it's all in one place. So those were the main questions, mm -hmm. awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up. Thank you guys for your participation. I cannot wait to read your comments and questions and see more of this discussion because I do want us to encourage each other to do a little bit more journaling in our scrapbooks. Now, as I sign out, let me just tell you what Facebook Live is coming next. So this is this week, but next week we're probably gonna jump on two times and it is definitely worth tuning in. Um, one of them is going to be awesome, thoughtful, really cool Christmas gift ideas. And I know that a lot of us are already starting to think about that. So that's number one. And the second broadcast that we're hoping to do next week is a brand new product reveal. So we haven't shown it, we haven't talked about it, but we're gonna reveal it and unbox it and get you all excited. So we'll see you next week. Thanks you guys for being here.